Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, my Omega collection has recently grown quite a bit so I wanted to share with you what is in the box. This is June uh, 2023 and I'm guessing uh, there are many Omega videos right now, not talking about uh, real Omega watches but more like the Frankenstein that sold for over 3 million US dollars at a Philips auction. In on it uh, was the uh, director of the Omega Museum who insisted the brand should buy uh, the watch that uh, he and a couple of other guys apparently at, at Omega had uh, pieced together from uh, vintage uh, pieces. I think they even had baked the, uh, the, the dial, not faked, baked. And uh, of course, uh, once again, it's a Periscope, the famous uh, Periscope, who uh, always uh, scouts uh, the archives on the internet to expose uh, those uh, fake uh, jobs, many of them uh, ending up uh, at uh, auctions. And, you know, it, it's a great lesson because those auctioneers with their fine clothes and uh, softly spoken words, you know, they always uh, sound like uh, their poop doesn't sting. But really, they've become uh, quite a cesspit of, uh, for, for fakeries. Uh, I mean, even John Goldberger sold uh, for millions uh, a fake, totally fake, made up uh, white gold uh, Rolex. Uh, and we were all like, ooh, ha, ah, when he presented it on the Hodinkee. Turned out to be uh, a, a, another Frankenstein kind of, uh, kind of watch. And now Omega is the victim, and uh, they, they came clean. Uh, you know the uh it's the museum director who made them uh, pay so much for for that and uh was philips in on it uh, or not i think they're just happy to get the commission just like they're happy to get a commission on all the modern current production or recent production watches from uh fp jean rolex or patek philippe that they are showing so they're basically in on the flipping right when we think auction, we think, um, oh, well, it's nice. It's the, those vintage pieces uh, found in uh, original condition from the uh, original family and, uh, and things like that. But really now it has switched uh, and three quarters of them are fairly modern uh, pieces, if not downright brand new stickered uh, pieces. And it's just flipping. So, hey, let's call it uh, the Christie's or the Bees, the, the Philips in particular. Uh, with uh, you know, with the air of uh, uh, of doing God's work, there uh, you're just a little uh, flipper, uh, and and that's uh, the end of it. And you're certainly not doing your homework uh, the way you should be doing. Uh, maybe hire a periscope uh, for a fee. I'm sure he doesn't want to work for any of the auction houses. Uh, he's well happy to do his job uh, for, for for himself. And expose the fakeries, but uh, yeah, it's not Omega's fault, right? But, uh, and to their credit, they expose the, the the issue. They don't want people to believe that uh, that watch existed, uh, the way it was presented, and that it was worth what they were made uh, to pay. Was is the money gonna go back to to them? I don't know uh, where this is gonna end up. Well, there you go. That's enough about that. Now the the right side of uh, Omega. And they've been uh, really on a, on a roll and making uh, fantastic uh, watches. Uh, so so exciting to uh, to discover uh, them at the at the boutiques. And uh, yeah, the prices are, are rising. Apparently, uh, Omega is uh, increasing its uh, retail price. Uh, GLC is doing the same. IWC comes out with very expensive uh, watches at the moment as well. Uh, I'm sure they know what they are doing. Uh, for, for the enthusiast, it's getting a, a, a bit expensive. But then again, who else makes watches like these? Uh, these days, I'm talking a lot about uh, independent watchmakers, which uh, are great. They get to do something uh, different, um, appeal to, uh, to the passionate uh, enthusiasts uh, as much as uh, Omega and uh, Rolex and Patek do, but in a, in a different way, um, which ones will survive, which one won't. But the thing is, not many independent could come up with a, a product like, for example, this uh, Aquaterra uh, World Timer, which I picked up recently, just came out in green with a ceramic uh, green bezel. Uh, really a fantastic, uh, fantastic showpiece. 
with the wall timer function and jump power function when you travel. But but yeah, how can an independent uh, compete with a almost a magnetic uh, movement with a long power reserve? Beautiful machine, yes, but beautiful uh, finish. Uh, ne nevertheless, silicon hair spring. Um, and uh, Meta uh, certified, so uh, it, it's an in incredible uh, piece that um, yeah, not many brands can bring to the market, and uh, that, that's that's what happens when uh, you know groups start buying up uh, different uh, manufacturers and uh, manage to man uh, to build everything in house, make more economies of, of scale, and uh, you can come up with a product which is not cheap but still comes up at a reasonable price for, for everything that, that, that you get. Really been enjoying this watch, love the, the color. Uh, one of my first Omegas, if I want to go back in time, was the Aquaterra blue dial teak motif. And I got to say, Omega, five years ago, uh, I, when I started getting into uh, watches, uh, the first watch that I got interested in was the Omega uh C Master James Bond uh, for the movie Spectre. So that was the one on the uh, NATO strap. I didn't know anything about NATO straps. Didn't know how much a watch should cost. I was uh, pretty uh, flabbergasted that the retail price of those. Didn't know you could uh, find them uh, cheaper on a secondary market, although not that one in, in particular. And then, uh, yeah, I started watching many videos, bought some Seikos, but my first luxury watch was actually the uh, Speedmaster Racing. Uh, got it for a very good price and sold it not long ago for the same price. Didn't lose anything. A very cool watch, really enjoyed it. The next one I, I got was the Aquaterra 38.5 millimeter vertical teak motif in blue without the frame around the date. It was the first uh, one, I think, that had those uh, 15,000 Gauss uh, resistance. Uh, just a fantastic one and, uh, and done piece. Uh, I did a lot with it. Really enjoyable. And uh, I got it full set at what I thought, for what I knew back then, uh, seemed like a great price. And indeed, years later, I sold it for more because they changed a bit everything about it. The, the teak motif is horizontal and, and all that. The date is at six. And I read that that one there was really the nicest one they, they've done. And I can see the Aquateras right now, not really um, uh, selling off the shelves. So maybe they should go back <laughs> to doing the very same watch they were doing five years ago. Well, actually that one was an older model from uh, 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, really a fantastic watch and, uh, and I made money uh, reselling it. Uh, those uh, still trade uh, really well above 3000 uh, US. I bought it for, for less than that. And then uh, the, the next one uh, I got is the, uh, the classic and uh, Archie Luxury, uh, Paul Pluta. I was advising everyone, you know, get the uh, Rolex Explorer 2, 16570. It's a great price and it's bound to rise and it did. And I made money selling mine. And I really enjoyed it. And get the um, 1861 caliber, uh, the one that was current at that moment uh, with the big uh, black box, the moon watch box. The, the moon watch with the Hessa light, and I did. And I got it for the cheapest price, I think, in the world uh, at that moment, right here in Hong Kong. Brand new stock from a uh, gray dealer, uh, 3000 US or something like, like that. And I never saw it uh, cheaper than that. Dealers were selling for more everywhere else so a year later. Every time I take it, I'm thinking, why do I need anything else? It's just so beautiful. I don't want the new one, I don't want any of the specialties. I don't even really want that much the, um, uh, I mean, I like the CK2998, uh, I've looked into it, but uh, if I have another one, then I wear even wear less this one and I have too many watches or, or already. Uh, of course, this is just a little part of my collection and for contrast, I have a couple of roll eyes in this box. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't want to be unfaithful to my Speedy. I, I love it. I think it's still a great buy. It's pre pre-coaxial, very simple, and as soon as you turn the crown a little bit, it starts. So even though it doesn't hack, it's really easy to set the time to a reference, and uh, it's been a beautiful companion. I keep it in, uh, in good nick. It's uh, maybe the oldest watch uh, in, my, in my collection. Um, just a, a must, must have. 
along with uh, with a sea dweller. To me, uh, the sea dweller 4000, the best diver ever made by any brand, and certainly by Rolex in the 40 millimeters. This is the uh, the winning combo. You can't do better than uh, than this. Uh, I, I like the Tokyo 2020 uh, with the green details. Uh, I, I like uh, very much the uh, Apollo, was it 13 or no, the Apollo 15. The Snoopies, I don't really care for them. Um, the Ed White, I don't like the faux patina on it. Otherwise, yeah, very cool. But the faux patina kind of ruins it for for me. And yeah, this is the th this is the one. Um, before we get to the dress watches, and since we're talking uh, speedies, this is not a speedy reduce. This is the speedy date uh, Japan edition, which I think looks so cool. This is the later version with the Lum uh, Luminova uh, on it. There you go. So this one I got full set, like, like new, almost unworn. If you remember on the channel, I showed you uh, another one from an earlier batch which had a tritium faded, very cool. Um, th this one is a uh, minty, 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 minty with Luminova, so the later years, I think 97 or 98, uh, this one, just uh, such a cool piece. Um, yeah, it's not the, the Daytona Paul Newman. At the same time, it's a lot more solid. It's got that retro vibe. It's a very affordable, starts around less than 2000 US, 1500, 1300 maybe, depending on the condition, up to maybe three. Three and a half thousand if you want a full box, full set, uh, like new, this one, almost unworn. And this is very much the same bracelet you would have had in a Speedy Pro, I think. It really, uh, not a top, top bracelet, but, you know, shows its uh, its age. But just a beautiful, super cool piece with uh, the nice uh, tachymeter bezel. And very practical, uh, you get the, the date. So this one runs a value, that's for the buttons are in line with the crown. Unlike the uh, Speedy Reduced, uh, which has the button higher because they run an ETA base movement with a Dubois de Pras, I think, uh, module on top. So the module uh, is higher than the uh, actual movement. Here it's a different watch, completely different. It's uh, integrated chronograph, the classic uh, value reworked somewhat by uh, Omega. And uh, it keeps uh, the watch very thin, uh, very, very slim. Still has a, a sticker uh, on the back. It's a very special watch with a nice font, I think, on the minute uh, numerals. Just a very cool watch. If you don't know it, still uh, many of them are available, the Speedy Date uh, Japan. And uh, yeah, recently, uh, the day after I bought this one, I was lucky enough to get absolutely fantastic watch i love wearing this one this is the seamaster 300m uh, 60th anniversary of the the first james bond uh, novel and it's been a bit hit or miss uh, with those uh, james bond watches some of them were a bit gimmicky here no gimmick on, on the front they bring back the uh, earlier waves and a beautiful dark color. The sapphire crystal looks like uh, like hesalite. Uh, the the loom is to die for at, at night. The the sixty and the uh, and the minute hand are loomed in uh, in green, while the rest is in blue. So it's a great effect. I mean, the, the difference between the green and the blue will fade out pretty quickly, uh, I'd say even a, a after 15 minutes. But the loom will, will last uh, you all night. Uh, beautiful. Don't you love uh, a loom bezel? It's just... Uh, and and uh, such a great look, so unique to uh, Omega. The hands, the waves. Uh, I really like the font they use now for this, uh, this bezel which is in aluminum, also the dial uh, is not uh, on this watch here, it is not in a ceramic like the, uh, class like the current references. Um, 
this one looks much better i think because they put it on the the mesh uh, gives it a lot of brightness a great contrast and reduce the mass from the uh, end link of the classic bracelet oh i didn't expect to love it as much with the lollipop i love everything about it very smooth crown and uh of course you have the uh, animation at the back the james bond animation uh, four different images took them a long time it runs constantly so it is linked without loss of uh, power reserve to the uh, running of the seconds the rest coaxial master chronometer good power reserve you know it it is so unique and uh, I actually forget about <laughs> this thing at the uh, at the back and i just wear it like a beautiful omega seamaster I uh, just love the 60 replacing the, yeah, I'm using love a lot, but uh, really it's so cool to have the 60 replacing the uh, triangle. What a cool, uh, cool nod to the, to the anniversary. And it's not in color, it's not in red or anything. Uh, so it, it's subtle. Everything is just bla white and blue. It's just so good. Uh, they, they really did it well. And then sometimes I remember, oh my God, there's a, there's a show at the back. And... Um, yeah, how can you not love this? I think we all love James Bond. I, I, I can I, I can watch uh, Casino Royale every day. I think it's the best one, uh, really. Uh, certainly by, with Daniel Craig, but overall, Casino Royale, uh, it, it had everything. Just uh, loving it. And now we have uh, two very, very special pieces on the dressier side now this is the uh, the seamaster boutique edition with a beautiful sunburst burgundy dial and there's a lot to say about about this one uh, so the indices the hands the logo are in uh, 18 karat white gold you have the onion crown and this case shape is uh we, we've seen it on some of the olympic uh, models it has also, those uh, typical liar lugs that we've seen on all the other watches so far, uh, but not as a strongly marked. It's a very interesting case, uh, very slim. And I was interested in buying one of those, uh, one of the yellow uh, colored uh, Olympic uh, version. Uh, and then uh, this uh, popped. And uh, if you have never seen it, it's because it's not been publicized. They make very few of them, even less than the CK uh, 8859, or, eight, or I forgot the, the name, the, the beautiful sector dial watch. Uh, this is really a one to be, you have to be in the know at the boutique. And this one has a, a lot more secrets. It comes with a very special box. So you might know, you might remember the City editions that came out a few years ago. New York, Paris, London, uh, a few with uh, the same format, same kind of sunburst dial for most of them. And uh, they were very popular. Uh, they keep uh, good value. They're really collector's items. And they didn't do one for Hong Kong. If they had, it probably would have been uh, red. So when I saw this, I thought it was the Hong Kong version at last, but it's not. This one is the Omega's own version with the iconography of the brand on the box. I mean, within the box and also around the uh, case back. See, which is assassinated. Uh, you see the, the movies, observatory, the sports running, timekeeping, uh, the uh, Omega uh, headquarters, I, I believe. Uh, you see uh, some nautical references, the uh, coaxial, the uh, hippocampus, uh, and of course, the uh, space exploration references golfing so all those things we've been uh, associating with uh, omega so it's a tribute to the to the brand itself it's uh, omega boutique edition and uh well you might have seen now uh, the uh, cereal what's very special about this one the cereal is that the uh 
within it in sequence we have the numbers 852 which is the Hong Kong country code when you're calling uh, Hong Kong uh, so the, the watch is a bit uh, is a bit dirty not sure what happened there sometimes I wear my watches <laughs> don't worry I wear them all uh, this one I love to go to a sort of a cocktail or when I know I know I go to a nice restaurant with the dimmed uh, lights um, I'll wear this piece of course it's on a black leather just very suitable um, I forgot what, what I was saying, but but yeah, it has 852 in the serial in sequence. And on top of it, there's, there are three eights uh, in it. So uh, yeah, if you want to offer me, uh, if you're in Hong Kong uh, or in China, you love this, you want to offer me uh, crazy money, uh, uptickwr at uh, gmail.com and uh, I'll buy another one with a different <laughs> serial. Uh, but, but no, seriously, uh, wonderful, unique piece and... Um, watch guys when they spot this they have no idea what it is and uh, you see you can still have a great conversation about omega you're never wrong when you wear a, a speedy even uh, next to someone who has a very expensive watch everybody loves the speedy everybody loves the moon uh, the exploration i mean why are we on her on earth how did the moon get there it's so interesting uh, it's fascinating it's part of uh, our DNA to uh, ask those questions. So the uh, yeah the the link to the the moon the moon watch it's always great. Lots to talk about uh, on this one, and then uh, yeah this is a fascinating uh, piece, very unique. You're not gonna see many of them. Good luck finding one. Uh, really uh, one piece to uh, to cherish in an Omega collection. But. The one I cherish the most is uh, my Omega Museum number eight. So the museum collection, normally, not with this piece, which is interesting too, normally uh, takes a watch from at least 50 years uh, or more um, from the history of Omega and recreates it on a one-for-one -one basis. They, they've made some really, really cool watches. Some are quite expensive. Um, this one, I was at the shop with a couple of friends. Uh, shout out to sh to uh, Josh and Simon to see something else, and then I spot this in the in the furthest corner, and I'm like, "What is this?" And we take a look. Wow, we loved it. Look at those lugs. You know, very what you could, would see on a Patek, the case. You know, nicer than you would see from a longer, and the dial to die for the dial oh my god with the concentric circles on the white sub dials the tasteful uh, colors used on the cream dial you have uh, of course golden um, uh, indices and even the movement so the movement has only been used in the <coughs> 50th if I'm not wrong, not 60th, 50th anniversary of the Moon Watch, where they did a Moon Watch very similar to the regular one, but with a lacquer dial and a movement. Uh, I think it's a Frédéric Piguet uh, base uh, without the rotor. Uh, it hacks, it has a longer power reserve, it is coaxial on top of it. So, very different movement than the 1861 uh, or the 321. Uh, very uh, pleasant movement to to use high horology i want to say a uh, type of uh, movement and it is used in this watch which uh, is very slim just perfect proportions 39 millimeters oh man uh, i had to buy it i paid full retail i know you can get them on Kona 24 there's a couple of them a bit less it won't last long because watch finder just did a, a little nod at this watch and um I mean, if you can get one, look at those leaf hands. Just, just go for it because, funnily, it was uh, it came out 10, 11 years ago, but it trickles down to the boutiques. You can still get these sometimes at the boutiques, which is very unusual. Uh, and it's called uh, so it's from 1949, the Race and Timer. A Race and Timer was a sort of device. 
nothing like a watch uh, used uh, created by Omega to time uh, races at the uh, the Olympics. And somewhat, uh, this watch uh, references uh, that as a homage. Uh, but it looks a lot also like the vintage watches, although I've never seen one exactly like this. And this one looks better than any vintage one I've seen. And of course, it will be reliable. It's a coaxial. It's a chronometer. Right? If you don't know yet, a chronometer is not a chronograph. It can be, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so this is a chronograph because you have the chronograph function. And I'll show you the reset. A chronometer is uh, that it's been uh, tested uh, for accuracy. Uh, so that's what it is. This one is a chronograph and a uh, chronometer. Only 1949 made, which is a lot for a gold watch. But uh, man, if I had to have just one, uh, one, one piece, at least one dress piece, I even love this one more than my uh, Patek Calatrava. I'm sorry, but this is... Um, it, it, it's more wearable, it's more interesting, it's just gorgeous. It feels good to wind, it's, uh, it's got a nice rubbery feel to the, to the winding. It's a great movement. So, uh, yeah, Omega, despite being part of a big conglomerate, they are more playful than uh, Rolex. They can uh, do th those things, they can reference their past, they can do uh, playful things, uh, take things further, take things uh, back in time, and always impress. Every year now I go to the boutique and uh, shout out to uh, Omega, the uh, Hong Kong boutique. Every year she shows me something uh, really cool and every time a great service. I just love the brand. Yes, it's getting very expensive. And uh, I started my journey looking for value. And Omega offered it. Still might get it on uh, older models because there's so many of them uh, about. And they are solid watches. So uh, service won't cost you too much. The service at Omega, at least here in Hong Kong, is top, top notch, really uh, quality. And you're always welcome at the, at the boutiques. And um, yes, there are models in a great demand. I think some of that is manufactured. I think the Speedy Tuesday, the Snoopy, it is a bit BS in my opinion. But if you like it, uh, good. I wouldn't pay a dime over retail for it. If you want to do that, that's your problem. I don't care that much for Snoopy. It was not part of uh, the things I read as a kid from being from Europe. Um, I don't like uh, certain gimmicks. Oh, okay, some some others I just don't like on, on a watch. So uh, feel free to spend your money uh, on that. And uh, but but yeah, they're very fair. Uh, they they look at um, each customer fairly in terms of your spending at the at the brand, and uh, you can always get on the on the on the wait list. And. Um, uh, what I like is when the, yes, they, they did a lot of uh, limited edition. What I prefer is when they do a low production uh, model, like, uh, like, like this one here. I don't know how long they'll make it. It's possible to get it, but you have to be at the boutique, ask for it, and, uh, and wait a bit for, for it. Um, and like the, like, like the, the James Bond, you will get yours, but just be patient. And uh, you'll be rewarded for being uh, faithful to, to the brand. I think they're doing a lot of things right. I don't know about the uh, recent price increase, if it's uh, wise. I suppose they know what they're doing. Wish them all the best. And it's true that uh, the demand for watches is, is strong. I'm worried, though, by the, the time it took them to uh, release to the shops the new Aquaterra, almost a full year after it was announced. And uh, now I see them stay on the shelves. Um, I don't think that's uh, well played. They are very nice watches, but there's many other nice watches in, in this world. And uh, yeah, it's true. People look for value now. And if you can't negotiate any discount on watches that uh, are readily available, it gets a bit uh, more difficult. But uh, yeah, there you go. Not all is about uh, money. Sometimes I, 
I want to pay the, the full retail and I did for those four watches, which is crazy for, for me, but I just had to have them. And it's great that Omega does watches that you have to have because, uh, I mean, they're, they're just so cool. And I love my Rolex. I love my other watches in my collection, but there you go. I mean, j just this on a it's fantastic collection, uh, just with, uh, with Omega. It, it does everything, you know, the, the Seamaster, Arkens back to the first Seamaster where it was um, an everyday watch, not really a sports watch like it like it became. Uh, it's an everyday watch, but with uh, qualities you find in a sports watch to make it uh, more resistant to uh, to daily uh, things. And with the coaxial, with the meta certification, anti-magnetic, uh, and, and all that. Uh, that that's exactly what uh, the Seamaster was and it's just a wonderful, uh, fascinating uh, watch. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed discovering uh, my current Omega collection. I can't promise it's gonna stay at uh, at six. Good chance that it's gonna, there's gonna be more uh, next year. I hope they will uh, surprise us. Uh, maybe I will get one of the more vintage case looking uh, Speedmaster one day, the CK2998 style. Uh, maybe uh, Amanda will surprise me uh, with a call for the, uh, <laughs> the Ed White, although I'm not actually on, on the list for, for it. Uh, I, I don't know, there's always something uh, coming. And by the way, they've announced a few months ago the spy rate, you know, uh, easy to adjust. Uh, appendix to the to the hairspring and uh, I haven't seen that model yet in the store I haven't seen that spirit on another model than the Omega Racing that they announced it on so uh, yeah, I'm maybe wondering what's going on there maybe uh, maybe it's coming taking their sweet time or maybe it could be an issue <laughs> who knows you know uh, but uh, you know those watches are tested uh, like, like crazy and uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty safe uh, with uh, with all these. So there you go. Let me know a bit uh, what you think about uh, Omega, the the current watches, the old models, the, the little scandal that they have to uh, deal with with those uh, auctions. And uh, yeah, you know that's just normal. It's greed, right? They're, they're, when there's money to be made, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can be paintings, uh, cars. There's a lot of forgeries uh, out there. It was just uh, bound to happen to uh, to a big watch brand, but uh, well, they, they called it uh, at least, and uh, they're the ones who bought the watch, so it's not like uh, someone lost a lot of money uh, because of them in some uh, so some way. And it was good that they rectified the uh, public perception of, um, of the value of their vintage uh, Speedy. And, uh, and it, yeah, it's a great warning for, for people who are bidding on those uh, watches. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I think 30 minutes is, uh, is enough. And uh, we'll talk a lot more, I'm sure, about uh, Omega. Any, any specific questions or you want to know, uh, you want to see a full uh, video about these watches, uh, they're already on my uh, channel, but I can make another one. Another day. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.